finally, moving on to question eight. Now, the final question is Corpio 2 exam. We're looking at a question here in terms of modeling and modeling with volumes of revolution. Okay, so quite a long question. Part A and B are quite nice, and then part C and D are quite tricky. So let's jump straight into this. So part A, it just asks us to find the value of K. Now K is used in this equation here, Y equals ln 3.6X minus K. Now this equation here models the curve BD. So using this information now and this figure two, can we extract anything? Well, we know when X is one here, when X is one, what's my Y value? Well, that's just clearly zero. So when X is one, Y is equal to zero. Well, we can use that. We can use the equation to obtain the value for K. So when x is 1, y is 0. So what we know is that ln of 3.6x, but x is 1, so ln of 3.6 minus k, that's equal to 0. So what ln value gives us 0? Well, that's just clearly ln of 1, right? From your A-level maths, ln of 1 gives us 0. So this bit here needs to be equal to 1. So what do we subtract from 3.6 to give us 1? Well, therefore, k must clearly be 2.6, okay? So k, okay, that's k, believe it or not, my writing's just gone very off there. k is equal to 2.6. So that's part A done. So we just mark that in. Now part B, what's part B asking us to do? Well, part B says find the depth of the paddling pool according to this model. So again, we're using this model here, and we want to know what the depth of the paddling pool is. Well. The depth will be when x is at its maximum, right? 1.18. So all I've got to do is sub 1.18 into my equation. And my new equation, don't forget, will be y equals be y equals 1. And it'll be 3.6x. And where the k was, remember we've got a value now. We've got 2.6. So minus 2.6. Okay. And we want to know what happens when x is 1.18. 1x is 1.18. Okay, so just to bring that in now, therefore, y is equal to ln 3.6 times 1.18 minus 2.6. What does this give us? Well, you'll get 0.4995 meters. And there we have it. That's the depth of the paddling pool according to the model using this equation here for the curve BD. So that's part A and B done for the first three marks. So now we jump into part C where we're looking at some of the trickier maths, okay? So we just quickly clear this. Part C. So part C is looking at volume. This is where the volume of revolution is applied now because we're looking at the volume of the water in the pool when the pool is filled to a depth of h meters. So, because we're talking about volume, so that's our y equals here, we're going to be rotating about the y-axis. So we need this in terms of x now, okay? So we're going to have to do some rearranging to get this in terms of x. So if I just do this up here, so to get this in terms of x, well, first thing I'm going to have to do is take the analog here. So this will be e to the y. That's going to be equal to 3.6x minus 2.6. Now, just add 2.6 to both sides. Or what I might do is just, yeah, so 3.6x. I'm just going to write it this way around. That's going to be equal to e to the y plus 2.6, like so. And then finally, we've just got to divide by 3.6. So therefore, x is equal to e to the y plus 2.6 divided by 3.6. Okay, so we've got it in terms of x now. So my formula now will be v equals. So remember your formula, it'll be pi times the integral. We won't put any limits on just yet. We'll come back to that when we're about to perform the integration. And then it's going to be my x squared, where this is x. So it's going to be e to the y plus 2.6 over 3.6 all squared. So if I write that down, plus 2.6, and this is over 3.6 all squared. And this is with respect to y now. Okay. So the first thing to think about here is that this will be e to the y plus 2.6 all squared, and this will be divided by 3.6 squared. So what I can do is I can take that 3.6 squared out of this. So what that'll give me is v equals, so it'll be pi over 3.6 squared. Okay, that's the first thing I can do to make this a little bit nicer to work with. Now what I've also got, if I do it over here, is I've got e to the y plus 2.6 squared. 
Well, this is nice, easy double bracket just to expand. So if you expand this, what you'll get is e to the 2y plus 5.2 lots of e to the y. So 5.2 lots e to the y. And then finally, you'll get my, uh, plus, sorry, plus 6.76. Okay, expanding this. So what I can do now is write out my full integral. So it'll be the integral of e to the 2y. And then it's just this expression here, plus 5.2e to the y, plus 6.76. And this is all with respect to y, so let me just put a bracket around it, dy. So I might run out of room here, um, hopefully not, but what we've got to do now is integrate this. Now let's think about limits. What it's saying is that this is in terms of h, when it's filled to a depth of h meters. So. What we know is we're going to start with a depth of zero, nothing's in the pool, and it's going to go up to h. So my limits are just simply zero to h, okay? So we're going to integrate this now between zero to h. So what will I get when I integrate this? So integrating this now, what we're going to get is, I'm going to do this over here just so I've got enough room. So this will be pi over 3.6 squared again, like so, in the bracket now. I'm going to get e to the 2y divided by 2, okay? Because we're integrating e. e to the 2y over 2 plus 5.2 e to the y. Like so. And it'll be plus 6.76 e to the y. Uh, sorry, 6.6. Oh, oh. Getting muddled up. 6.76 y. There we go. Okay. And this is between h and 0. Okay, so I'm kind of going a bit curved here, but all I've got to do now is plug these limits in here, and we're going to get our value. So I'm just going to do it cleanly across the bottom here now. Um, hopefully we will have just about enough room. It's going to be a bit tight, but what I'm going to get is pi over 3.6 squared, okay, just like we had here. Plugging in h now, this will be e to the 2h over 2, so this will be in two different parts now. So it's going to be e to the 2h over 2, e to 2h over 2, plus 5.2, so wherever there's a y, it's just going to be replaced with a h, 5.2 e to the h, plus 6.76 h, okay, so that's my first bracket, and then we've got a minus off when it's 0, okay, so it'd be e to the 2 lots of 0, so e to the 0 over 2, so it's going to be minus e to the 0 over 2, e to the 0 over 2, plus 5.2 e to the 0, and then finally plus 6.76 times 0, so that'll just be 0, so that'll be that. So, I've already done this on my calculator, but if you perform all this um, and write out and simplify it, what you'll actually get is pi over 3.6 squared, okay, so just like we had at the beginning, we're going to keep it like that, pi over 3.6 squared times e to the 2h over 2, plus 5.2 e to the h, like so, 5.2 e to the h, plus 6.76 h, and I'll have my minus 5.7 at the very end. And there we have it. That is the volume here of water in the pool when the pool is filled to a depth of h meters. So quite a tricky question there. Um, but it's the, the most important thing is recognizing that we're about the y-axis when we're rotating it. Okay, so that's part C done. And then finally, let's have a look at part D. So I just clear all this. Let's look at part D here. So we're told, or, or given the information, that the pool is filled at a constant rate of 15 litres every minute. So it's, it says, find in centimetres per hour the rate at which the water level is rising in the pool when the depth of the water is 0.2 metres. So, part D. Now, the fact that it says rate means there's going to be some differentiation involved here. And this is technically a connected rate of change question. Um, this used to be on the old LXLC4, but it's kind of made its way into the further math section now. Okay, so if I write up here just so we've got it, we know V is equal to pi over 3.6 squared. Again, times by e to the 2h over 2, e to the 2h over 2, plus 
e to the h, and then finally plus 6.76, plus 6.76 h, okay? So now, I just need to differentiate this. If I differentiate this, we're going to get dv by dh. Now, what I actually want is dh by dt. That's what we need. So we need dh by dt. Now, how will we obtain dh by dt? Well, we're going to have to use chain rule, right? So that's going to be dh by dv times dv by dt. Okay? And that will give me dh over dt. Okay? So, dh over dv, well, I can obtain that by differentiating v here and then taking the reciprocal. And my dv by dt, they've already given us that information. They're telling us that it's, connect, it's filled at a constant rate of 15 litres every minute. So we can come to dv by dt in a minute. First, we need to differentiate this. So dv by dt, what will this be? Well, if I differentiate this, that's going to be pi over 3.6 squared, like usual on the outside here. This is going to be times by e to the 2h now. So e to the 2h. This will be 5.2 e to the h. Nothing will change with that. Like so. And then finally, we're just going to get plus 6.76 here. Okay. So now we've got dv by dt. I just need to take the reciprocal of this. But we know h is 0.2 meters. So when h is 0.2. Okay. So I'm going to have to plug that into my h now here in this dv by dt. So if you plug that in, what you'll get is that dv by dt is equal to 3.539 and so on. So what we need is 1 over this. So therefore, dt, uh, sorry, this, is, this isn't dv by dt. Uh, this should actually be dh by dv, or dv by dh. I'm half asleep. dv by dh, dv by dh. So we want now dh over dv. Okay, I'm making a lot of mistakes today, so I do apologize. dh over dv. So this will be 1 over 3.539. Okay, so we've got dh by dv now, so we can use that in the chain rule here. Now we just need dv by dt, so this is going to be equal. That's going to be equal now to 1 over 3.539 times by. So it's being filled at a rate of 15 litres every minute, and that's every minute. We want the answer in terms of an hour, centimetres per hour, so it's going to be now remember, it's in litres. We don't want this in litres. We want it. So we're going to have to divide here. It's going to be 0 0.015. Okay, 0 0.015 times by... Now that's per minute, so we need it by hour. So we're going to have to times it by 60 to with one hour. Okay. Now if you put this in on your calculator, what you'll get is you'll get 0 0.254. But remember here now, my rate isn't... 0.254, because when we plugged our h in, it was in terms of meters. The answer is in centimeters. So where we plugged in a h here, we did this twice. So we're going to have to times this by 100. Times that by 100. So doing that, we're going to get 25.4 centimeters per hour. And there we have it. So that's question eight, fully complete the full paper. If you're new around here, be sure to subscribe and win for all the new further maths exam papers.